Um, so first of all, I'd like to, to kick off with a question about why your organization is pursuing a net zero goal. What are the benefits and why is this important? So thank you, Ursula, and a uh, pleasure to be with you uh, today. So reality is that uh, net zero is uh, the only viable future. So as an organization, we strongly believe that uh, this is imp it's important for us to lead the creation of a future uh, that we collectively need and want. So uh, for us, it's key to be to lead by example uh, and to drive uh, in a consistent way our internal and external efforts uh, in line with our company purpose uh, and with our values. Uh, this is uh, the reason why uh, at COP21 in Paris, uh, we took uh, the formal commitment to become carbon neutral uh, by 2020. And uh, last year, September, we celebrated uh, that achievement. Uh, um, and we always uh, keep in mind that uh, there is no way for a company to be successful uh, in a society, society that fails. This is uh, uh, our joint responsibility to invest uh, in our common interest, uh, and this is why we believe that it is urgent uh, to work together uh, to create a zero carbon world. Ah, thank you. Uh, Steve, what, what is your perspective on this? Well, I, I fully agree with everything that Letitia has, has just said. Climate change is a press, pressing issue globally, one that needs to be tackled with utmost urgency. There's no option for us and any organisation across the country but to pursue a path to, to net zero and to do it at real pace um, for this generation but future generations to come. And that's as a business owner, local authority, agency, manufacturer such as ourselves, agriculturalist, utility provider and service provider, it is imperative that we think uh, where to get started and contribute to a greener tomorrow. Thank you. And I mean, perhaps you could also um, tell us more, more, Letizia, about the positive actions that your company is taking already that is driving the change to make net zero a reality. Yeah, yeah, because I, 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 while climate change is a global threat, uh, mm -hmm. and of course with disruptive impact, uh, we should not forget that the climate action is also a unique opportunity for innovation and for a more inclusive uh, renewal of society. And it's also good business. It's the business and the jobs of the future. So the speed of climate action uh, needs to be uh, accelerated. For the climate, for people, for the business, uh, there are a lot of resource efficient solutions like uh, energy efficiency, clean energy, uh, mobility, uh, that are more economical for household, mm -hmm. for business, for cities, for countries. And at the same time, also improving and preserving the quality of our living environment and the personal health of people. Yeah, I think this is an important point. But I mean, perhaps, Steve, you'd like to add some of the other actions as well that uh, signifies is carrying out also in the UK and broadly. Absolutely. Thank you, Ursula. Yeah, to add to what Letitia just said, sustainability really is in the DNA uh, of the organisation and we're proud uh, to walk the talk. So at the end of 2020, we've already become a carbon neutral company and we've also achieved 100% renewable electricity and celebrated our ambitious milestones on sustainable revenues, safety, uh, supplier sustainability and zero waste to landfill. So that's something that is uh, very widely celebrated within the employees and our customer base. Mm -hmm. We've also generated 84% of our revenues of energy efficient products, systems and services, which was ahead of our target of 80%. And in the UK, the same as what we are globally, we're fast approaching plastic free packaging on our consumer products, which will be by the end of this year, 2021. We've heard a bit about the benefits and the opportunities. What have, has been the really most difficult or significant hurdles that your organization has faced when it comes to um, achieving net zero? How have you been able to overcome this? One important barrier to 
progress and to make things happen has to do with the psychology of changes. So we basically are all, uh, um, I mean, not welcoming changes, and it's often uh, much more easy for people uh, to immediately see what they think they will lose, uh, and it's much more difficult to see what they gain in the future. Mm-hmm. So we have experience, for example, when we call it for the global phase out of incandescent uh, light bulbs uh, back in 2006. Uh, that technology was at the time representing uh, two thirds of our business, uh, but was also highly inefficient, uh, turning basically uh, only 1% of the input energy into light. Then at the time, uh, we had uh, quite some consumer concerns, and uh, we had a lot of uh, people that were fighting to keep uh, that uh, technology because it was uh, nice, it was uh, appreciated. And now when we look back, uh, everybody acknowledged that uh, uh, the transition was great and uh, bringing a lot of advantages. Thank you, Maria. Well, Steve, what have you what have you faced when you've um, been aiming to, to drive forward this change in the UK segment? Well, I think uh, as a company, we're, we're cautiously optimistic. Um, however, we're optimistic as the industry itself, it, the lighting is moving in, in the right direction. We also recognise across sectors, companies are waking up to the role they need to play to ensure the UK uh, is on track for its net zero ambitions. Uh, mm-hmm. But we're also concerned to realise that it's just not moving fast enough. So we feel the pace and the action and activity that's needed is, is well, according to me, the real hurdle is to accelerate. questions about what the company has learned along the way. Um, Maria, what what do you know now that you wish you'd known before you started strategizing and planning for a net zero future? Yeah. So when I look back, I don't think there were any big white spots that we overlooked. Uh, Yet what we know now is that uh, we have uh, in front of us uh, a decisive uh, decade uh, of climate action uh, and uh, that speed uh, is of the essence. So the action that we take now and until 2030 will define the future of this planet. Uh, That's looking back, we wish we would have done even more in the past than what we actually did. And of course, we cannot change the past, but the future is in our hands, which is why we strongly encourage all public and private sector leaders to define and adopt the programs to double the efforts. Double our efforts on energy efficiency, infrastructure innovation, renewable, uh, just go full speed by doubling our efforts because it's now or never. But what do, you, what do you think the main learning has been that you would share with a company at the beginning of their net zero journey, uh, Maria? What, we, what, what worked for us is that in the early days of our climate program, we realized that we could make a significant contribution to carbon emission reduction by phasing out our own core business and leading the transition to LED lighting. Uh, and, that, and that we did by being the number one in what we now call conventional lighting. Uh, we choose, uh, our decision was to shape and to lead the transition in the lighting sector, uh, even by cannibalizing our own business. Now, today our sales consist of 83% of LED lighting, and we are the number one in this technology. So the main learning I would like to share with other companies is to envision what business you should be in the future and then lead your company and the sector transition. Because if you don't change your business, one day you will be out of business. Yes, indeed. And and how about you, Steve? What have you uh, seen as a key learning along the way? I think just to expand on that, we recognised at an early stage the need for the industry to transform and innovate, to set an example on how the lighting industry can help the UK with its green recovery and decided to take a a lead role. Um, An example, the use of halogen bulbs and fluorescent bulbs can cause around uh, 1.26 million tonnes of carbon emitted every year. 
uh, the equivalent to uh, carbon produced by over half a million cars on UK roads, so very substantial. Additionally, moving to LED uh, replacement light bulbs can save consumers an average of £75 in, uh, in energy bills uh, for, for every household across the UK. Um, mm -hmm. So our data uh, shows that a complete switch to LED lighting across the UK over five years would help reduce the UK's carbon footprint to the equivalent of uh, one of our coal-powered power stations. So uh, it really is um, a massive amount, which is nearly, um, well, the equivalent to 636,000 cars or almost half a million households in itself. So what we're talking about here is massive change and big impact. Perhaps you could tell us a bit more about how you are engaging with your supply chain and cross-sector more broadly to drive net zero transition across the economy and, and help with the systemic change that is needed. So the fact is uh, that the, the race to the future is a team sport. Either we mm. all win or we all lose. And this is why we extensive uh, uh, create extensive partnership and programs in several areas, because this is something that you cannot uh, do uh, alone. And we work closely with our supply chain. We also audit all our suppliers, and uh, this is helping us not only with the required progresses on uh, SDGs, but also uh, help us to create uh, further learnings, uh, sharing uh, value and experiences. Uh, is uh, very important also the uh, leadership role that uh, we decided to do uh, at the beginning, uh, as I was explaining, uh, uh, of the century in our sector by mm -hmm. changing phasing out our old inefficient technology in support of the Kyoto uh, Agreement at the time mm -hmm. and now to support the goals of the Paris Agreement. And the third uh, element is that uh, we have various partnerships across the sectors with other progressive companies like we do, the Corporate Leadership Group. At the moment, of course, COP26 is a, is a really key moment um, in the international climate policy. Could you tell us a bit more about the outcomes you are looking for from the COP? In one word, there is actions. It's time that all countries and companies adapt a carbon neutral target. And we see progresses, so we see some uh, uh, movement happening, uh, but the Piece at which this level of ambition is converted into measurable action, this remains a concern for us. So we would like to see commitment backed with plans, with tangible and very measurable and clear actions. We would like to see all public and private sector leaders to spend less time on agreeing what to do and much more time on doing what was agreed. Uh, we need to move away from the rhetoric and work the talk. Uh, we have experience, so we can drive things together. Uh, it's about the decision, it's about uh, uh, deciding uh, to uh, act. Okay, um, Steve, so from your side, what would you um, be looking for from COP as well? Well, I'd agree. We, we need action. Uh, then there's been a lot of talk, pledges and commitments. As a business, we want to double the pace of action towards a greener future. Um, we're glad that COP26 has a full day dedicated to addressing environmental impact of cities and the built environment, an issue that urgently needs addressing. Mm -hmm. The role that buildings have to play in climate change rarely gets the same attention or coverage as issues such as energy production or transport, but they are very significant parts of the problem. Uh, the UN estimates that in 2019 emissions from all buildings hit an all-time high, accounting for a third of all energy related greenhouse gases, so it is a massive wow. contributor. In Europe, buildings account for 40% of energy consumption and one third of greenhouse gas emissions, so very significant too. According to BASE, upgrading from conventional lighting to LED technology can deliver significant cost savings of up to 80% uh, for a business. Maria, as 
as you know, at the moment, uh, the EU has proposed a major package uh, of legislation uh, called the Fit for 55 package. Could you tell us a bit about what your view is on that and, and what you're looking for uh, from this important piece of legislation? I really would like to applaud the European Commission for uh, this comprehensive package. Uh, it's really a set of enablement and tools for the Green Deal and, uh, and to create a real path to uh, the 2030 goal. So as a company, through our partnership, we are closely involved in the creation of this package and we sincerely believe and hope that uh, this is what we need but we hope that it will be still strong at the end of the political approval process. Uh, the worst things that can happen is that this uh, uh, become diluted during the approval process. So if it stays strong as it is, uh, this uh, is uh, a very strong uh, opportunity for, uh, for, for all of us. Steve, um, from a UK policy perspective, what is your view of the net zero strategy? What are you looking for uh, when this comes to the implementation of the strategy? Sure. Well, uh, the UK government has recently announced the heat and building strategy and also a push towards a greater adoption of electric vehicles. So decarbonising the UK's built environment is a significant challenge and also comes with major opportunities. Accelerating the adoption of energy efficient solutions, products, uh, will lead to job creation. So the government needs to encourage energy efficient retrofits in the built environment and better plan new infrastructure development with a focus on technologies that can expedite the carbon reduction uh, in emissions. For government and their agencies to have lighting as a name technology in terms of the green recovery and available funding would help promote the wider benefits of replacing UK lighting stock and also open up the opportunity, as I mentioned, of creating more jobs. I think the reality is we're, we're in a light bulb moment of thinking, but that light bulb should be a connected LED one.